You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. So hello and welcome to Life on Gabriela TV. My name is Helen Shilliday and today we're following up on our healthcare series by welcoming uh, Kelly Charters to Life on Gabriela TV. Kelly is a registered nurse and she's also the Pacific Council member for the Pacific Rim, which includes Gabriela. Um, so welcome Kelly and thank you for joining us today. Hi Helen, thanks for having me. You're most welcome. So obviously healthcare in BC is a really big issue at the minute and looks like it's gonna be ongoing, um, a major issue as we go forward. Um, First of all, what I'd like to do is ask you about what you feel is the current state of healthcare in BC in general, and um, what you, as a nurse and as a, a, a guiding member of the BCNU, feel um, are the sort of biggest issues that we've got in healthcare in BC today. Yeah, so thanks for that question. Um, I've been a registered nurse for 22 years and 17 of those have been here um, on Vancouver Island. And it's, we're in a, we're in a state that I've not seen before. Um, healthcare is definitely in a crisis right now. Uh, we have more nursing vacancies, uh, over 5,000 nursing vacancies across this province. Um, and the shortage is making uh, delivering safe patient care and quality care to the citizens of BC even uh, more difficult um, than I've ever seen before. And so um, lots of things happening that we're working towards to, to fix the problem, uh, working with the Ministry of Health. Um, and, and I'm sure we'll talk more about those later. But um, right now, as the healthcare system stands, um, we're, we're, we are really in a crisis that needs, needs some serious problem solving. Yeah, and I think that lots of people, I mean, certainly patients are seeing that on the ground, as well as nurses and other staff in, um, in our healthcare system right across the board right now. Um, the word crisis that you use is one that has been used um, by the president of the BC Nurses Union, Adrian Gear, um, several times, actually. And I think it's a word that lots of people would echo. Um, other words that Adrian used about this situation, um, she described the healthcare working environment as uh, bleak and uh, even desperate in some instances. Um, I think that's very difficult language for, for patients to hear when um, they are ill and they're, you know, hoping to go and, and get care. And it's, it's, a, it's worrying language, really. Um, can you sort of pick out a little bit, clarify from your personal experience and also your experience in the BCNU, um, what sort of things underpinned Adrian's comments there? What kind of uh, what kind of environment are nurses working in? What is it like in the system right now for nurses? Yeah, so our nurses right now are burning out and, and suffering physical and mental injuries from the workload that they're facing. And you, it's my belief, and, and I think the belief of many nurses, is that, you know, with nursing and allied health, we've been propping up the system for a long time with our dedication um, and commitment to making sure that no matter the shortfallings of the healthcare system that our patients aren't affected by it. And so to do that work, we're working mandatory overtime, um, double shifts, uh, missing meal breaks, and um, really working with um, more and more patients beyond what we were ever trained to work for, work with. And so really nurses, and I, I'm sure other allied health too, are, are putting their own physical and mental health on the line to, to try and minimize the impact it's having on the patient populations that we serve. And so I hope, and our hope, all of our hope is when people are accessing healthcare, um, that they aren't necessarily hopefully falling through cracks or seeing some of the cracks. Um, but right now the situation is getting to a point where, where we can't band-aid it together anymore and really big solutions are needed in order to fix the, the situation that we're in. Okay, it's, yeah, I can see that um, 
what you're describing is um, are these pressures on nurses at the minute leading to a lot of just absence or are teacher or um are nurses seriously sort of reconsidering their 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 career their roles yeah i think it's a mix of a lot of things it's really hard to pinpoint uh one thing we know uh there are nurses who are leaving the nursing profession uh, especially uh, nurses who are close to retirement or um, our young nurses who are just entering the, the career and, and don't see it as a viable option for their future. Um, but we also um, see nurses just looking for other opportunities. W becoming a nurse uh, is, yes, you can work in acute care in a hospital, which is most what most people think of, but there's just so many possibilities and so many options out there. And with the growing demand for healthcare resources, um, there's new programs being added every day which is already which strains the the nurses that we do have, but also creates opportunity for nurses to look for other niches to go into that might be less demanding than working in an acute care setting. Um, and we also see nurses going into private nursing, into agency nursing, um, or or leaving uh, Canada to go elsewhere. So um, lots of different pulls, definitely pulling the our re, our limited resource as it is, and so. We really um, uh, are focusing on how do we bring nurses back into the system and how do we retain the ones we have more importantly, because um, we can't afford to lose a single, uh, another single nurse from the system. And what sort of support do you think nurses need right now? I mean, we want to, if, if government and um, the patient body actually want to be supporting nurses right now in the best ways they can what 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 would you be looking for for that would support nurses right now yeah so um some of the things that we're looking for are um safety in our work sites um you may have seen um some of the news stories recently and i know it's come up in the legislature around the nurses exposures to illicit substances and violence because we're facing an, ap uh, an epidemic of um, uh, people who have substance use disorders. And so we firmly believe that we need to uh, support people who are, are, are suffering in this epidemic and, and believe in harm reduction and their right to health care. Unfortunately, though, um, that right and that um, it ha is impeding and, and, and making it unsafe for nurses at times. And so we have to try and find that balance of how do we keep our work state safe um, and also deliver that care. So safety is huge right now for nurses because a lot of times um, that is one of another reason why nurses are leaving is because of safety. Some of the other things um, can be just uh, the workload demands. Um, and so how do we support nurses to have flexible schedules um, and uh, allow them to have their time off, their vacation time when they when they want to take it? Because when you when you deprive nurses of that ability, um, then it, it becomes less and less of a, des a desirable field to work in. And so there's there's those pieces as well. Um, we've also have our new uh, collective agreement that we've bargained in the last year. Um, that has really um, added some of those flexibility pieces for nurses and um, increased our compensation, which hopefully will help bring nurses back into nursing um, to compensate us at a, at a fair amount as well. Yeah, I think, you know, all of us would say that it's such an important role and it's such an important job. Often nurses are the first people that we see when mm -hmm. we're seeking out healthcare. So, um, it's really important to patients, I think, that nurses are happy and well rested and that they, you know, are, are ready to help us out and feeling on the top of their game. I think that's what we all want. Um, but, you you know, we're talking about retention um, and it has been a really big focus. You mentioned compensation. One of the things that came up recently um, in our very local area here, obviously, our local hospital is Nanaimo Regional General. Um, one of the hospitalists there, a critical care doctor, was saying that um, for hospitalists in any rate, um, their compensation is not on a par with other people working in the same role in other areas in BC. 
um, and that perhaps we're losing staff to other areas. Um, is that the same with nurses? Are we in competition with other places across BC and are we stepping up to the mark on compensating our nurses or are we falling behind? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to say that um, we uh, negotiated really well in our last round of bargaining and had significant wage increases to our general wage and as well as recognizing um, years of experience, um, up to 30 years of nursing with additional wage increases. Um, we are now one of the highest compensated um, provinces in Canada, which is amazing. Um, and that coupled with, I know what we're going to talk later about the minimum nurse patient ratios is really moving us to a place where BC should be um, uh, for nurses looking uh, at the opportunities that are out there, one of the best places to come and hopefully Vancouver Island can be one of those best places too. Um, but comparably, um, I think we're, we are well positioned. Um, additionally, um, just announced on March 1st, there's... Um, bursaries that have been announced uh, to compensate nurses who are working in rural and remote areas. And for us here on Vancouver Island, that's including the Gulf Islands, the West Coast, and um, the North Island. So uh, for Gabriel Ola, that means anyone working, um, delivering health care on the island itself will see bonuses of $2,000 per quarter, uh, up to $8,000 a year. So hopefully that's going to help attract uh, people uh, to these areas that are really hard to fill the nursing positions. That's excellent news. That's really good to hear. So one of the things that you just mentioned um, and referred to was the nurse patient ratio. So in case any of our viewers haven't um, seen this news, uh, BC is actually the first province in Canada to implement minimum nurse to patient ratios. And I'll just refer to my notes here so that I can let you know um, let our viewers know what exactly that is. So this is stuff that's been won by the BC Nurses Union. Uh, it was a key plank of their contract negotiations last year. Um, what we've got is in medical, general and surgical inpatient, one nurse to four patients, palliative and focus care, one nurse to three patients, high acuity and step down care, one nurse to two patients, intensive care, one nurse to one patient, Rehabilitation, one nurse to five patients during the day and in the evening, and one nurse to seven patients at overnight. Um, Adrian Gear did call this a milestone in BC healthcare and said that she felt that these ratios would reduce mortality rates uh, and provide nurses with a better quality working environment. Um, that's really uh, fantastic to hear. I think, though, given um, the shortage of nurses, uh, the retention and recruitment that we've just been discussing, um, how do you see that actually panning out in reality? When should we start to see those ratios being fulfilled? Yeah, so, you know, I'm so excited about minimum nurse patient ratios um, and, and love talking about them because, as you said, we're the first province in Canada to get them. And uh, I've been nursing for 20 years for 22 years, actually. And, uh, you know, this has been something we were told would never actually come to fruition, uh, just through other rounds of bargaining. And so to have this be the reality of um, what is being put in place by the Ministry of Health is really, really exciting opportunity. Um, before I get really into the ratios, I just want to highlight right now, um, you know, nurses at our hospitals are experiencing ratios of up to one to nine patients. Um, sometimes one to 12, one to 13 patients on a bad day. Um, that's not, that's not the goal. And, and if we were fully staffed, we wouldn't be there, but on a really bad day, that's how, how awful it can be. And, um, so there's lots and lots of studies that show that minimum nurse patient ratios, um, uh, decrease mortality rates and increase, uh, the, out, the better outcomes for patients and for the nurses. So we're super excited to have these. Um, but your question is, is legitimate. How do we get from where we are to there? And so it, it is going to take a lot of work. Um, and what is exciting about this work is, is, is our connection with the Ministry of Health um, that we've established through this. Uh, the BC Nurses Union um, has been working very closely with the Ministry of Health in, in an implementation plan um, 
which is um, the first time we've ever done that. Normally we really connect with the health authorities directly. And so to be uh, part of the writing of the policies and the guides is really, really exciting. Um, but it comes with also doing all those retention pieces too and the recruitment pieces and really starting to share with, um, with people thinking about getting into nursing about how exciting nursing can actually be and the opportunities there are and making it a, a safe uh, and enjoyable workplace that it, that it can be. Because really, um, if you talk to most nurses, they love their profession and it, what they don't love is the conditions that they have to work in. And so as we work towards fixing those, I'm hopeful um, and optimistic that we will see a shift in the way healthcare is delivered in this province. Um, just to add to that, we know um, in Australia, um, they ha do have minimum nurse patient ratios and they did see 7,000 nurses come back into nursing when they implemented them. So I I'm optimistic that we can see those same results here in BC. Um, and it will, it will, it will take time and work to get there, but we are on the right track with these announcements and the policies that are being written and then hopefully implemented. Yeah. That does sound really positive, really positive. Um, yeah. so, um, I mean, my sister's a nurse, so I know exactly what you mean. Nurses are very special people and they require a whole host of, um, attributes that I think a lot of us you know really respect so um giving them that joy back in their job i think is so important because they give us so much um how is this translating then into funding also for um increased nursing places at, at colleges and training for nurses is that being backed up as well by the government yeah there's lots of work being done um to support the post-secondary education system um there's bursaries that have been announced to help nurses nursing students um, because we know how expensive it is to go through um post-secondary education so there's been some recent bursaries announced to help student nurses we are also um, working really closely to support uh, internationally educated nurses uh, who want to come to Canada and work and how do we support them transitioning to BC and, and working in our hospitals. So, uh, and decreasing some of the red tape that's involved um, it, it, for them to be able to come and work in BC alongside us. So that's really positive news. Um, yeah, and then also just really getting into the high schools and getting people into the post-secondary um, system who want to become nurses is really, really important. Um, and then the other thing is supporting those new grads when they come out of school. So it's one thing to produce a bunch of nurses, but we know um, a significant number of nurses leave within the first five years because it's not what they exactly signed up for, um, especially in the working conditions we have now. And so things like putting in uh, senior clinical nurse mentors in place, to help shoulder to shoulder support them at the front front end, um, providing them some protected time um, where they're not maybe taking on a full load or uh, just having that extra support in classroom time to, to really integrate them into the workforce and not expect the same uh, high level of expertise that maybe a veteran nurse would have and, and really just giving them some grace and some extra time and support. And, and hopefully keep them around for a long time because we need everybody, like I said earlier, yeah. Yeah, I think that mentorship piece is really brilliant um, and really, really important because we all know um, there are a couple of professions like that. Mine also, I'm a teacher. Um, certainly I think in your profession and mine, a lot of what you learn is not learned at college. <laughs> a Absolutely. lot of what you learn is learned from more experienced staff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, with with the stressors of the system, we're seeing more and more of our young nurses working shoulder to shoulder with other young nurses and that expert voice um, isn't always there. So finding ways to bring that expert voice in and, and part of that is recognizing uh, nurses that do have the experience. So part of that was that um, additional pay for people who have uh, longer experience and, and really celebrating that and then 
also the creation of these mentor positions and giving them a title and some time to actually recognize the fact that we want your mentorship and we want your guidance and we want you to guide our new nurses into uh, this beautiful profession. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And I really, really hope that comes to fruition because there's nothing really more important than having somebody who has been through all of those early challenges um, by your side while you're working when you're brand new. I remember that myself. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. So looking forward, I mean, we've got an aging population and an expanding population, especially in our region. We've got a lot of people moving here and a lot of them are a bit older. Um, so especially, you know, somewhere like Gabriola, we're one of the oldest demographics in, um, in BC, actually. Mm -hmm. um, what is the, what's the sort of um, way that nurses role is going to sort of be expanding uh, with those new challenges that are coming into the environment now with, um, you know, a need for more sort of care of our elderly and people who want to stay and age in place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And and I'm not an expert in, in, in what Island Health is going to do to, do, to meet these demands, but um, I know nurses are stepping into these roles. Um, we see more and more nurses going into work in partnership with nurse practitioners and uh, um, and GPs uh, in primary care clinics because we do have a role to, to offer support there. So maybe you need to go to your GP for a complicated issue, but maybe if you have chronic disease management, a nurse can come in and help uh, with the education piece and, and checking in on you and, and take a lot of that burden off of our, our other healthcare allies um, and and provide that service. We also are excited because um, while we were talking about minimum nurse patient ratios in acute care, we are going to be the first place in the world to implement nurse patient ratios in community care um, and in long-term care as well. That's not been done in any other place that has ratios. And so that's really exciting to acknowledge the importance of our community care nurses having the time and ability to actually spend with our with our patients and our and our population because we know uh, the more care that that people can get in the community prevents them from having to go to acute care and does keep people in their homes longer um, and so it's just a really really important acknowledgement that we are going to make sure that those caseloads for our community care nurses are manageable so that they can spend that time with their clients which is really just really exciting. I know too, um, the Ministry of Health has announced um, a bunch of new buildings that they're doing, and one of them will be in Nanaimo with um, some more um, long-term care or transitional care beds, um, which doesn't keep people at home, but it will hopefully uh, decrease the amount of people we're seeing in the hospital who are just waiting for that extra support, but not quite ready to go home. And they're I think the intention is to be transitional care. So maybe it's transitioning back to home or transitioning to long-term care, but um, giving pe getting people out of the acute care hospital setting and, and giving them more of that rehab re resources that they need to, to make the next step. Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely hear what you're saying. Um, I mean, um, certainly it sounds as though you're sort of indicating that, that nurses could be playing quite a sort of pivotal role in um, almost kind of keeping people out of the hospital environment by being able to intervene, um, see patients earlier, spend a bit more time with them. Because that's one of the really big problems I think we have, and, it, and it's repeated all over the province, but we have a, obviously a big issue with it here, which is people having to either not having a family practitioner, um, not having a family doctor, not having easy access to um, a walk-in clinic. And if they do, it's not somebody that they know. Um, mm -hmm. Do you see nurses taking on a bit more of that sort of, not exactly outreach role, but you know what I mean? Sort of being that that person that, that, that people know that they can talk to, that they can spend a bit more time with when doctors are really, really pressed for time and that nurses can do a bit more, I suppose, kind of uh, triage on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's what we're seeing in these primary care clinics. So, you know, there's one in Nanaimo 
um, and there might be two now actually, but these primary care clinics, it has all of the different um, allied health. So you have a dietitian and some physiotherapy working alongside nurse practitioners um, and physicians and then bringing in registered nurses and sometimes even licensed practical nurses or registered psychiatric nurses into that group um, to really deliver focused care. And, and there is care that nurses can provide without supervi supervision of a physician. And so giving yeah. them those pieces of work takes the burden off of those other allied health that and they can focus on the things that they need to focus on. And so I do see a role for them there. Absolutely. Um, uh, and then expanding the role, which we see a lot of pressure in the community, in community care. Again, um, home and community care is, is a vital part of our healthcare system and it's been under-resourced. Um, but we know that, uh, anyway, so there's some community care nurses I was actually just talking to recently and um, they were saying that they used to, before the really, really critical shortage, be able to go and yes, they'd come and change your bandage on your legs. So to, maybe that was the issue. But then they would also do an assessment of your house and make sure that you had all the supports you needed. Um, maybe if you were having struggling getting food, they would connect you to a food bank or a home delivery of food system. Like they would do a fulsome picture. But now because they're so pressed for time, they were saying that they all they can do is go change the bandage and then they have to go. They have to go to the next client and they're missing an opportunity to really to really help people in their homes. Um, and so hopefully we can move back to that through this minimum nurse patient ratios. And really that's the work that nurses want to do. That is why, why we all got into the profession is to give that fulsome care. None of us feel great at the end of the day when we can only go in and do that one band aid. Um, we want to, we want to do the whole thing. So um, really optimistic that this is a solution. Um, it's not going to fix the system overnight. So I'm, I don't want to give anyone false hope, but what the hope it brings for me is that we're having the right conversations. We're talking about um, the fact that uh, the impact that nurses have on patients' lives and that we actually need a manageable workload and able to be able to provide that service. Um, and these are conversations we've not had before with the Ministry of Health. It's not been acknowledged, really. Um, it's more just been piling on, piling on over the years mm -hmm. of how much the nurses can take on. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm really, really optimistic and, and have a lot of hope for the future um, because of the minimum nurse patient ratios. And, yeah. That sounds fantastic. And I think um, I think listening to what you've been saying that, a lot of people, you know, will be quite reassured that things are moving in the right direction now. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think um, has sort of brought about that change in relationship between um, that that recognition now that the BCNU, that the Nurses Union is getting from um, the Ministry of Health? What do you think has prompted that change? Um, I think there's been a change in our leadership for sure within BCNU, but also um, the current government is very motivated. Uh, the NDP is very motivated to uh, to uh, make some significant changes in healthcare, and so as long we you know um, we'll support any party that wants to make positive changes in healthcare. And so right now, you know, there's there's a recognition of the crisis we're in with a motivation to actually listen to the experts on the ground, which is the nurses and the physicians and all the other allied health, but um, not coming with a top-down approach. And so it's just super refreshing and exciting um, that there is this grassroots approach of listening to the frontline staff and coming up with real solutions um, that are hopefully in, in a few years as we build it, uh, we'll see it come to fruition and, and, and see some big changes in the system. That's absolutely fantastic. And it sounds great. I think people will be reassured to know um, that government is actually getting down there and talking to nurses and um, listening to what they've got to say and implementing the things that they think are important. Yeah. Um, because that's that's the way that things are going to get solved, hopefully, isn't it? And it's really good to see that you feel so positive about that. I do. And I, I just hope that all their promises are kept. That's what we all hope for. Right? <laughs> so I, I'm very optimistic right now, um, even though we are facing such a critical time. Um, and so for any nurses listening or anyone accessing the healthcare system currently, um, it is pretty bleak right now. I'm, like, I don't want to sugarcoat what, what the reality is right now. 
Um, uh, but there is hope being infused into the system. And I think in a legitimate way, we just now have to hold people accountable and make sure that they follow through. Absolutely. So moving in the right direction, but we actually need to um, have an expectation of that being fulfilled. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today, Kelly. I really appreciate you joining us. And I know that people watching um, will take a lot of heart from what you've said. Thank you very much. And before we wrap up today, I just want to express to you what I think everybody thinks about nurses, which is that you're an absolutely amazing bunch of dedicated professionals, such fantastic caring people, and we really, really cherish you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Helen. It was great talking <laughs> to you today. You're most welcome. Thanks very much, Kelly. Fantastic. Bye -bye. Take care.